Post Toasties, the heap good cornflakes, is proud to present Gun Smoke. Around Dodge City and in the territory on west, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Smoke, the story of the violence that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. Say there, next time you hear a crackling noise in your kitchen, you better get up and investigate. Maybe somebody just couldn't wait for his breakfast of crackling crisp post toasties. And that's a treat you shouldn't miss. Post toasties, you know, are the heap good cornflakes. Why, after one taste, I'll bet anything you'll agree with me. Post Toasties is just the best thing that's happened to corn since the Indians discovered it. There's nothing quite like sweet kernel corn flavor when it's toasted right in. Toasted into crisp, fresh cornflakes. Man, oh man, that's Post Toasties. Heap good cornflakes. Better try them. And now, Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. <laughs> This ain't much of a room, Quarter. Take a look out the window. It ain't much of a town. Would need a whole lot more dust down there. You couldn't see Dodge at all. <laughs> That'd be an improvement. But things will work out. They always have, haven't they? You got a short memory, Quarter. Didn't work out so good up in Deadwood. Well, at least we didn't get shot. Now, things will go better here. I hope so. What kind of lawman they got here, I wonder? Well, we'll soon find out. Ought to be along any minute now. I sent word we'd like to have a talk right away at the hotel here. By the way, Carter, who's going to do the talking this time? I'll do it. It must be him. You let me handle this now, Douglas. Okay. Come in. My name's Matt Dillon. Well... I'm Ben Corder, Marshal. This is my partner, Harry Duggan. Hello. Good night, Marshal. You asked me to come here. You said it was urgent. Oh, it is, Marshal. It is. You see, Duggan and me, we're business partners. And whenever we come to a new town like Dodge here, we like to get to know whoever's running the place. That way we figure there won't be any misunderstanding later on. Well, what is your business, gentlemen? We're gamblers. Oh, uh -huh. Now, what do you want of me? Dodge is an open town. Uh, we make money gambling, Marshal. Sometimes a lot of money. We just want you to know in advance that you'll get your share of it. I'm a lawman, Corder, and as long as I am, there won't be any crooked games in Dodge. Oh, no, Marshal. You know how sometimes a player will lose a little money and start a fuss over it and then maybe even go to the law about it. And when he does, he's usually been cheated. Before he gets to the law, there's another killing. Now, you can run your game, Corder, but you keep it straight or out you go. Both of you. That's not friendly, Marshal. You've made one mistake trying to bribe me. You make another and you're through and dodge. One of those hard-nosed marshals, huh? You'll find out soon enough, mister. Good day, gentlemen. You handled him great, Corder, just great. Now, don't be a fool. He's no better than anybody else. And I got an idea we can persuade him yet. Just 
Chester. Yes, sir? How's the prisoner? Oh, he's all right, Mr. Dillon. Just sleeping off his drunk. Well, <coughs> it's late. I think I'll get out of here and go to bed. Don't forget to put the lamp out before you leave the office, Chester. No, sir, I won't. Get out! You see anybody? You want a rifle? No. Stay where you are. All right, you can crawl over now and put that lamp out, huh? But stay low. Yes, sir. He's through. Ain't we going after him, Mr. Dillon? Now, he had a rifle, Chester, and he was in the alley just across the street. That's mighty poor shooting if he wanted to hit me. What do you mean? I think he was trying to scare me. To show me how they treat the law where he comes from. Oh, them two gamblers, huh? Yeah, maybe. But I can't be sure. And I'm going to take a rifle and go out the back way. I'll see you tomorrow, Chester. Yes, sir. Hello, Matt. Good evening, Kitty. Sit down. Ah, thanks. <sighs> Ah, it's crowded in here tonight. I'll get you a drink. No, no, not now, huh? Chester was in earlier. He told me about you getting shot at last night. Well, I didn't get hit anyway. But you might have, especially a man with a rifle. <laughs> well, Kitty, I'll admit I don't like the idea of being ambushed. I prefer to do my fighting in the open. Oh, Matt, why do you have to fight at all? Why can't you live like other men? Well, somebody has to enforce the law, Kitty. Sure. Forget it, Matt. Any idea who was after you last night? Well, it might have been one of those two men watching us from the bar over there. Maybe both of them. Oh? They look like gamblers to me. Yeah, they are. The one who's headed this way calls himself Ben Corder. If there's going to be trouble... No, there won't be. Just sit still. Evening, Marshal. Hello. Ah, the right pretty girl. Say what you have to say, Corder. Sure do make it hard to be friends, Marshal. I just wanted to say that I heard you got shot at last night. So? Well, I'm sorry it happened, that's all. I sure don't envy a man who has to be a marshal. It's mighty dangerous. And besides, it usually don't pay very good. Well, what do you think I ought to do about it, Corder? Quit? Oh, that isn't necessary, Marshal. Why, if you were smart, you could stay right here and make more money and take less chances, too. I, uh... I didn't know for sure it was you, Corder. But I know it now. What do you mean? There's a stage out of Dodge in half an hour. You and Duggan are going to be on it. Oh, no. We're opening our new game across the street tonight. I'll take your gun, Corder. Now, wait a minute, Marshal. You can't do that. Yes, I can do oh, it. Oh, no, you won't. <laughs> All right, Duggan. I want your gun next. Uh, sure, Marshal. Sure. Turn around, put your hands on the bar. All right, now go pick up your partner. You're riding the stage north tonight. Now get going, Duggan, and don't ever come back, either one of you. They got on the stage, all right. I was there to see them do it. And just before it pulled out, I unloaded their guns and tossed them into the floor inside. And then they left, and I forgot about them. I figured these two, like so many others I'd run out of Dodge, would keep going and make their trouble somewhere else. But a couple of weeks later, I found out I'd figured wrong. 
I was walking up Front Street one evening with Doc. That uh, Humboldt woman was in to see me again today, Matt. <laughs> well, you're usually complaining about a shortage of patients, Doc. I know, but this woman's not a patient. She's a suicide. Oh, Doc, that might be said of anybody who comes to you. Eh? Well, uh, oh, no, I'm going to remember that, <laughs> Danny. Uh, Mr. Dillon? Yeah. Oh, hello, Doc. Oh, hello, Chester. Say, they're right inside the Alphaganza there, Mr. Dillon, and I just saw them. Oh? Who'd you see, Chester? Them gamblers, Carter and Duggan, and they got somebody else with them, some stranger. Well, no. I'll see you later, Doc. Uh, sure, Matt. Yeah. There they are, right down at the end of the bar there. All three of them. Well, I'll um, be... Here he is. Here he is, Tolk. This is him. Well, we're back, Marshal. And we brought a man with us to sort of look after our interests. You won't buffalo him so easy. Hello, Tolk. You really Marshal here? Yeah. Why didn't they tell you? I didn't mention no names. What are you two talking about? What is this? Tolk Marlin and I are old friends, Corder. We worked and rode a long time together. We went through quite a lot, didn't we, Tolk? Too much. Remember? Yeah, I remember. You've uh, sold your gun to these two. Is that right? That's right. So you're here to kill me? Yeah. I'm here to kill you. morning appetites at your house. If they're pretty drowsy, here's a real good way to wake them up. Set a bowl full of Post Toasties, the heat good cornflakes, at everybody's place. Just watch your folks take notice when they see how crisp Post Toasties are. And wait till they taste that sweet kernel corn flavor toasted in. Bet your whole tribe will agree with you. Post Toasties are the best thing that's happened to corn since the Indians discovered it. And here's a thought if you'd like to make a good thing even better. Try topping Post Toasties with your favorite fruit. You'll find that's a mighty good way to start the day. Fact is, it's a downright delicious way. So next time you shop, be sure to ask for Post Toasties. They're the heap good cornflakes. You'll see. Post Toasties heap good cornflakes. The best thing that's happened to corn since the Indians discovered it. Heap good cornflakes. Post Toasties heap good cornflakes. Now back to Gunsmoke. It was a bad feeling to meet Toke Morlin again after some 15 years and to have him standing at the bar of the Alafraganza hired by a couple of crooked gamblers to kill me. Toke and I had run horses together over in New Mexico until the night we rode into Silver City and got taken by a drunken mob and beaten half to death. It didn't matter who they were after or why. The next day when they found out that we weren't the men they wanted, it was too late. Something had gone wrong inside Toke. And as soon as he was able, he rode off without a word. I never saw him again. Until now. How long you been a marshal? Long time, Toke. I never figured lawmen for much. I, uh, want to talk to you, Toke. Come on over to the table. Oh, no, you don't, marshal. Shut up, Porter. Come on, Toke. Sit down. Is uh, this your profession now? Shooting people? Oh, I gamble a little. Why do you do it, Tope? I don't like people much. Not after what happened in Silver City. You recovered from that beating? We both did. We were young. That was a long time ago. Maybe my memory is better than yours. <laughs> no. No, that isn't it. We both changed after that, Tope. <laughs> 
We sure did. But we changed in different ways. You hate everybody. I just hate mobs. I guess that's one reason I became a lawman. There was a lawman helping them that night in Silver City. He was the sheriff. There are good sheriffs and bad. Like marshals. I suppose. It's kind of too bad you're a marshal, man. You're going to go through with this anyway, is that it? I'll never back off from a fight. What if I won't fight you? You don't have to. I get paid anyway. But you'll have to leave Dodge. You think I'll do that? No. But I'll give you 24 hours to think it over anyway. All right. That gives you 24 hours, too. I don't change. Talk's nothing to me. Money is, huh? It adds to the pleasure. You'd, uh, enjoy shooting me? You ain't Matt Dillon. You're a U.S. Marshal. No, Tok, Tok, you're stupid. You don't think. Maybe, but I'm a pretty good gunman. Yeah, sure. Matt, you can let Corder and Duggan run their game here, or you can quit. It's a crooked game. There'd be fights. Men would die. No, I got a job, too, Tok. Twenty-four hours, Marshal. Okay. Twenty-four hours. Hello, Matt. Chester. Bo, Doc. Doc. You're looking mighty glum today, Matt. Am I? You should be. Why? Well, I've been over to the Dodge house. Mr. Risling's down with the gout again. And there's a lot of talk, Matt. I know you must have your reasons, but people are sure wondering what those two gamblers are doing back in town again. Well, that'll all be settled tonight, Doc. Well, I'm glad to hear it. Don't go to bed early, huh? We might need you. Yeah? A fight, man? Well, you didn't have any trouble with them before. Why, well, you... It was... Uh, it was Oh, that other fella they brought with him. Yeah, that one. Ain't there no way at all to stop him, Mr. Dillon? I've been trying to think, Chester. If there's anything in this world I hate, it's a paid gunman. I got no use for a man that can be bought for money. Money's important to Tok, but I don't see how... You know where Tok is now? Well, he was in the Texas Trail a little while ago. Good. I'll be back later. Marshal Dillon. Sit down, Marshal. You know Miss Kitty here. Hello, Matt. Kitty. You've been talking about you and me and Kitty. You've been talking about me, too. Well, then I'm not interrupting because I'd like to talk about you. Go right ahead, but don't stay too long. <laughs> She's an awful pretty girl, Matt. Maybe I better leave. No, no. You stay right where you are. Anything the Marshal's got to say, we can all hear. You leave, I'll leave. It's up to you, Matt. It's all right, Kitty. Stay. Toke, what are they paying you to get rid of me? $700. What if I give you $700? Oh, to shoot them? You don't care who you kill, do you? Don't matter much. No. All right, I'll give you $700 to clear out of here. Forget this whole business. You have changed, Matt. You sure never were a coward in the old days. Is that what you think? Well, so does Kitty, don't you, Kitty? Don't tell me what I think, <laughs> Mister. She's full of fire, Matt. She deserves a real man. Ah. No, I think I'll get my money from Quarter and Duggan. I don't want to leave Dodge. Not till Kitty and me get a little better acquainted, anyway. Now I am leaving. You're no good, Toke. You're really no good at all anymore. Wait till eight o'clock, Marshal. We'll see about it then. Sure.
I saw it, Mr. Dillon. I was just coming for you. It was Tope Moreland. He just shot a man at the Monty table back there. But the other fellow drawed first. Okay, Chester. Keep an eye on Porter and Duggan. Yes, sir. Tope! Evening, Marshal. You got here just in time. Did you kill that man, Took? I killed him. Why? Well, he objected to the deal, tried to pull a gun. It was self-defense. But that don't matter to none. A crooked deal always leads to killing. That's why I'm running your friends out of Dodge. You ain't running us out of Dodge, Marshal. Go on, Took, show him. I told you once, Quarter, I'll run this play. Keep out of well, it. Well, sure, Took, sure. I didn't mean nothing. Shut up! Right, but... I guess you ain't a coward after all, man. Now get out of Dodge. And take them with you. No. I'm going to try to kill me another lawman first. Okay, Took. So long. So long, Marshal. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I'm hurt, Matt. Bad. Yeah. You hit me both times. I had to, Tuck. It was too late to do anything about it. Yeah. Yeah, it's too late. By heaven, I... I wish I had last week back again, Matt. Uh, here it is. Yeah. Yeah. Quarter. Duggan. Get out of here. Any way you can, but fast. Oh, sure, sure. Right. Oh, and if you come back with another gunman, I won't wait to shoot him. Now get away from me. Just a moment, we'll tell you about next week's adventure on Gunsmoke. Say, Mother, want to see your small fry eat a better breakfast than ever? Well, may I suggest that you dish them up some sugar crinkles to start with? Sugar crinkles, you know, make breakfast more fun than a circus. Sugar crinkles is the sugar rice treat that's just right sweet. It's high time to forget the sugar-coated cereals that seem too sweet to you and those others that don't seem sweet enough to the kids. Just pour out crisp golden sugar crinkles and see how just right sweet a sugar-coated cereal can be. Just right sweet. Be sure to get several packages of sugar crinkles because they're great for snacks, too. Kids love them that way. Kids love them anyway. Try sugar crinkles and you will, too. For your breakfast or a snack, you love sugar crinkles, sugar crinkles. Sugar ice cream that's just right sweet. With milk for the breakfast joy. That's a snack from the pack. Oh, boy. Can't be beat. Just right sweet. Sugar crinkles. Good to eat. Smoke, under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were John Daner, Harry Bartell, and Lawrence Dobkin. Parley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Ken Peters speaking. 
Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, meets two brothers who want to stop his fight to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. Listen next week at this time when Gunsmoke will be brought to you by Sugar Crinkles, the sugar rice treat that's just right sweet. Sanka Coffee and Instant Sanka, the two delicious coffees that let you sleep, bring you Sanka Salutes. And this is Win Elliott Transcribe, saluting our people of the week, the everyday people who help make America an even nicer place in which to live. Your name is Private William Ault of Hyde Park, New York. And though you're home now from Korea, a part of you remains there in the heart and soul of a gentle Korean lad whom you knew only as Kim. You, Private Alt, hardly noticed this young war waif who peeled potatoes and sometimes scrubbed pots at your company mess. But then there was something you did notice. Whenever this scullery boy had time, he was poring over a book, an American book on engineering. Kim had a dream. Korea needed rebuilding, the roads, the bridges, the towns, and he wanted to be a part of it. Though he hadn't a penny, he wanted to scrape up enough money to go to school and to become a civil engineer. And not long after that, you, Private Alt, were ready to go home to America, where the schools are free and the bridges have been built. But you had one beautiful goodbye gift for your little friend, Kim. You found a school for him, and you paid the tuition. Thank you, Private Alt, for having been in Korea in the first place, for having understood one little boy's yearnings, for having helped. And in his name, we proudly send you, Private William Alt, this Sanka salute. Say, do you have any idea of what an American ambassador looks like? What do you What do you figure? A fellow in striped pants, a top hat, and maybe a Harvard accent? Well, my favorite American ambassador this week is a New York City taxi cab driver, and his name is Joe Burns, Ambassador Joseph Burns, that is. And what kind of an ambassador will take it from the State Department? He's a real 14-carat American ambassador of goodwill. You see, last week, Joe Burns had two young tourists from Venezuela in his cab. They left $280 behind them by mistake. But Joe Burns found them, and he returned the money and figured that was that. But it wasn't. The story became known down in Venezuela, where some people don't like our country, and where we're sometimes accused of being money grabbers who wouldn't give the other fellow a break. And one newspaper down there was so impressed by Joe Burns' kind deed that, well, they made him a page one story. And the U.S. Emb Embassy was so grateful to Joe Burns that a letter was sent to him, thanking him for putting our country in the good light it deserves. So fancy hats off to cabbie Joe Burns, the finest ambassador of them all, and to him with full protocol, this gala sank a salute. I'll be back in a moment with a story about the latest collegiate style, a brass beanie. But first, well, first, no, folks, if I say to you, here is a coffee with a full, rich-bodied flavor, and here's a coffee that's easy to make, and here's a coffee that lets you sleep. Well, you might think I'm talking about three different coffees, but I'm not. I'm talking about one coffee, the new Instant Sanka coffee, the only coffee in all the world that gives you all three of those advantages. Just taste Instant Sanka, made hot and black and good and strong, and you'll see at once that it's all coffee with the delicious, extra-rich flavor you want. It's a cinch to make Instant Sanka, too, whether you're making one cup or a dozen. And, of course, Instant Sanka lets you sleep because 97% of the sleep-disturbing caffeine has been removed. So drink as much as you want, and it won't keep you awake. Oh, and look for Instant Sanka in the new economy size jar, and you'll save money. If your grocer hasn't already got it, he'll have it soon. So drink Instant Sanka, the only coffee that combines extra-rich flavor with instant ease and lets you sleep. Now, here's a memo to the upperclassmen at St. Ambrose College out in Iowa. Go easy on one of the freshmen who's around the campus now wearing one of those beanie caps, fellas. He's a freshman named Vandy Farrell. You see, gentlemen, until freshman Farrell put on a beanie, he wore the hat of a regular Army major. And I don't know how you feel, but I think that 58-year-old freshman Farrell must be quite a guy to begin his Army retirement in this style. So I'll take my hat off to him with this... Sanka salute. And I'll be back next week when Sanka Coffee and Instant Sanka, both delicious and both caffeine-free, will again present Sanka salutes. In the meantime, this is Win Elliott.